In this chapter, we will be looking at the development in the 20th century of ensembles that specialize in Jewish music. First, we will look at liturgical choirs and then at secular chorales. And then in chapter 9b, we will look at the repertoire itself. Synagogue Choirs At the beginning of the 20th century, some large synagogues continued the tradition of the Chor Shul, with a professional cantor and choir. Some included organ accompaniment. That tradition was kept alive at Moscow's Grand Choral Synagogue and St. Petersburg's Grand Synagogue, among many others. Between 1933 and 1945, most synagogues of Europe were destroyed. The population was decimated. The tradition was nearly lost. But the tradition of synagogue choirs was kept alive in North America as well as in the United Kingdom and the countries of the British Commonwealth, especially South Africa and Australia. Some choirs were professional, some were volunteer, some were a mixture of both. Among the synagogues in America that continued a strong choral tradition with professional directors were Congregation Mishkan Tefillah in Boston, Massachusetts, under the direction of music director Solomon Braslavsky. The composer Leonard Bernstein recalled that it was at services at Mishkan Tefillah as a child that he first heard and became enchanted with classical music. Temple Israel in Boston, under the musical direction of composer Herbert Fromm. Temple Emmanuel of New York City, under the musical direction of the composer Lazar Saminsky. Park Avenue Synagogue in New York City, where Max Helfman was the music director and David Putterman was the cantor. Temple Emmanuel of Worcester, Massachusetts, under the direction of the great composer and cantor Hugo Adler. The synagogue K.A.M. Isaiah Israel in Chicago, under the musical direction of the great composer Max Janowski. Temple Emmanuel of Dallas, Texas, under the musical direction of composer Samuel Adler. And Temple Sinai of Toronto, under the musical direction of cantor Ben Steinberg. These are but a few of the many examples we could have brought forward. In the 1960s, something changed. Congregants became less interested in cantors, choirs, and organists performing what we would call classical music. In many synagogues, sing-along replaced performance. By the end of the 20th century, what synagogue choirs remained were largely volunteer singers under less professional leadership. A keyboard and or guitar replaced the organ. The musical idiom shifted to popular styles. Congregational songs had to be easy to learn and easy to sing. Musical leadership passed to talented singer-songwriters such as Debbie Friedman. Only a small number of synagogues retained the high artistic performance standards of the 19th century Choroshul. 
Transcontinental Music Publications is now the only house in the United States specializing in Jewish choral music. While Transcontinental continues to be a source for great synagogue music, their emphasis is increasingly on sacred music that is relatively easy to perform. And for the past few decades, they have published very little secular concert music. There are several synagogues in which the choral tradition continues today. The Pestalozzi Strasse Synagogue in Berlin features a professional choir, cantor, and organist every Shabbat and holiday. Temple Emmanuel in New York City has a professional choir, cantor, and organist, and live streams its services. Secular Choruses By the mid-19th century, most of the Jewish immigrants to America were coming from Central Europe. They found in the Christian community an already established tradition of German singing societies, Gesangverein. A singing society offered German immigrant Jews a way to participate in mainstream American culture and identity. In 1855, Wilhelm Fischer was directing a Jewish Gesangverein-style choir, which sang and performed both secular and sacred music. The end of the 19th century saw a new wave of immigrants. Some two and a half million Jews immigrated to the United States between 1881 and 1924, escaping wretched conditions in Russia, excessive taxation levied on Jews, forced conscription into the Tsar's army, and state-sponsored massacres called pogroms. In the massive wave of Jewish immigration to America from Eastern Europe at the turn of the 20th century were many choral singers and choral conductors. Many of the new immigrants had been touched by the socialist ideals that were beginning to roil Tsarist Russia. Many found their working conditions in urban American sweatshops intolerable and unfair. They formed unions and mutual aid societies, such as the Workmen's Circle. Formed in 1900 by Yiddish-speaking Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe, the Workmen's Circle served as a mutual aid society, helping its members to adapt to their new life in America, providing life insurance, unemployment relief, health care, social interaction, and education. The Circle also promoted Jewish arts and music, and perpetuation of the Yiddish language and its culture. Jews in the Tsarist Russian Empire had not been allowed to organize or have public cultural activities. Now in America they organized workers' unions, social clubs, and folk choruses. The first of these workmen's circle choruses in the United States was the Chicago Yiddische Sozialische Alberto Chor, the Jewish Socialist Workers' Choir, also known as the Freiheit Gesangverein, the Freedom Singing Society. Chicago's Freiheit Gesangverein was founded in 1914. It was called an Emis Kind für der Jüdische Revolutionere Arbeiter Bewegung in America, a true child of the Jewish revolutionary worker movement in America. In 1927, the chorus mounted a performance of Mendelssohn's Elijah in Yiddish. 
But the Yiddish libretto was not merely a translation of the original. It was recast as an allegory for the socialist workers' ideals. Here we see a poster and libretto for a performance of Mendelssohn's Elijah in Yiddish in Chicago, 1927. In 1915, the Patterson, New Jersey Jewish Folk Chorus was founded, directed by Jacob Bamel. In his article on the Patterson Jewish Folk Chorus, Robert Snyder writes, During the 20s and 30s, Zisha Valkovitz worked behind a sewing machine in Patterson, New Jersey, supporting a family of six in their three-room cold water flat. An immigrant communist devoted to the Yiddish language, he always grew happy thinking of the after-work hours he spent singing with the Freiheit Gesangverein, Patterson's 70-voice left-wing Yiddish chorus. Quote, when I go to the chorus, it's a holiday. I forget about my boss and I forget about the eight hours I'm sitting at the machine and I get a rebirth. In 1921, Jacob Bengel organized a conference of Jewish singing societies. And on April 15, 1923, a concert was given at the Hippodrome in New York City featuring nine singing societies, totaling over 600 singers, the largest Jewish chorus ever seen in America. As of this writing, there are only two significant Yiddish choruses devoted to social justice left in the United States, one in Boston and one in New York. Pictured here is Abessere Welt, a Better World, the Workmen's Circle of Boston's Yiddish Chorus. But then in the second half of the 20th century, there was a revival of Jewish choral singing, and it began at Jewish summer camps. Camp Massad was founded in 1941 in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. Massad's founder, Shlomo Schulzinger, emphasized Hebrew language and culture. Noted conductor Stanley Sperber reminisces, In the late 1950s, the Massad music counselor, Yonatan Zak, formed a counselor's choir which rehearsed in the evenings and sang, of course, exclusively in Hebrew. This activity so captivated us that a handful of New Yorkers decided to continue our choral singing, and in the fall of 1960, we founded the Massad Choral Group, which I conducted. A few years later, we decided to establish an independent group and called ourselves the Zamir Chorale. The ensemble's repertoire at first focused on arrangements of Israeli folk songs and classical choral works retexted with Hebrew lyrics. Eventually, they broadened to include original choral music in Hebrew and major works such as Bloch's Sacred Service, Schoenberg's Survivor from Warsaw, and Bernstein's Chichester Psalms. The repertoire of Zamir's first album, as Zamir, consisted of five arrangements of Israeli folk or popular songs, two arrangements of Jewish paraliturgical songs, one original composition, and seven classical choral works sung in Hebrew translations. In the 1970s, Matthew Lazar succeeded Sperber as conductor. Lazar broadened the chorale's mission and established the Zamir Choral Foundation, which also sponsors an annual choral festival, a network of youth choirs, and commissioning of new music. 
By the end of the 20th century, most of the Yiddish choirs had disappeared, but the secular choral movement was revived by a new wave of community choruses, including the Zamir Chorale of Boston, Zemmer Chai of Washington, D.C., and the Los Angeles Zimria Chorale. And in recent years, there's been a growth of youth choirs. There are currently more than 40 chapters of Hazamir, the International Jewish Teen Choir. The a cappella craze also has its counterpart in the Jewish world, with numerous ensembles on college campuses and in high schools. Here we see the Mangina a cappella ensemble at Brandeis University. And here is the Shenanigans a cappella ensemble at the Gan Academy High School. The a cappella craze has also given birth to several post-collegiate professional a cappella ensembles, such as 613, depicted here. The resurgence of Jewish community choruses is not limited to the United States. Here is the Coral Israelita Brasileiro. the Zemel Choir of London, and the Baruch Brothers Choir of Belgrade. There are also several prominent choral festivals that specialize in Jewish-related music. The Louis Lewandowski Festival in Berlin the North American Jewish Choral Festival, and the Sydney, Australia Jewish Choral Festival. So while classical choral music is rarely heard in most synagogues today, the secular choruses have filled that gap, performing the best of that repertoire in concerts. Of course, the performance of Jewish-related music is not limited to choruses that specialize in this repertoire. Towards the end of the 20th century, many school and community choruses became more interested in multicultural and interfaith programming. Choral music from Jewish traditions could now be found on the programs of many ensembles, and many conductors discovered that there is more to Jewish choral music than a once-a-year Hanukkah song. Next up, in Chapter 9b, we will examine the music itself, compositions both sacred and secular by 20th and 21st century composers.